In today's video we're going to be making the rail fence block and make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'll be showing you a couple of example quilts made using this block. Hi everybody, I'm Tom and I am the Colourblind Quilter. So today we are going to be making the rail fence block and this is block number five in our sampler quilt. With the sampler quilt we're working on building our skills as quilters making blocks based on squares and rectangles. There is a free worksheet that you can download in the description below and it has all the fabric pieces that you'll need and then step by step instructions with diagrams on how to make this block. And you'll also find information on how to make the block in different sizes. There is a second worksheet if you want to follow along and make the sampler quilt where you can download Load all the fabric requirements and get all the cutting instructions to make the entire quilt. The rail fence block is a really versatile block. It's very easy to make and there are different variations of it that you'll see. These would be the rails on each block. Sometimes you'll see the block with three rails, four rails, five rails. It just depends on the block and you can do whatever you like. If you've missed any of the videos in the series so far, you can watch them on the playlist and I'll link that up here. Also in the description below, you will find a link to pre-quilt where you can play with the colouring page for the sampler quilt and this will allow you to test it out with different fabrics and different colours to make it your own. We are strip piecing this block using long strips to cut up, which is the fastest way to make this. So to make this block, you are going to need. And in these measurements, I have allowed for an extra quarter inch of fabric, which will be used to square up the edge before we cut. So here's how you make the block. Begin by placing your fabrics right sides together with the darker fabric on the top. We're going to be joining these together with a careful quarter inch seam. I use a leader when I start sewing this to make sure that there's no little balls of thread or anything that get tangled up in my piecing. And then I am just chain piecing these three strip sets through by butting them up against each other and then sewing all the way down. I'm also using a foot that has a quarter inch guide in it to help make my quarter inch seam more accurate. Once finished, just simply cut the pieces apart cut the leader off and then we are going to the pressing mat. Place them dark side up, set your seam and then gently roll the dark fabric away from you, pressing and setting with the iron. Repeat this for each of the three blocks, pressing always to the dark side. Be careful not to swirl the iron because that will distort your strip. Here you can see that I'm just pressing along the length of the seam, not round in circles. Now arrange these in the order shown on screen and place two of the blocks right sides together with the dark fabric on top of the white fabric. Again, using that leader, we're going to attach these with a careful quarter inch seam. I haven't pinned these, I'm just stopping to readjust every now and then, but please feel free to use pins if you want that. And again, we're going to press that seam to set it, and then we're going to roll the fabric towards the dark red fabric, pushing the seam towards that fabric and then setting it with the iron. Now take the third piece and place it right sides together again on the white fabric and then joining with a quarter inch seam. Again, please feel free to pin, but I'm just adjusting mine as I go down. And that quarter inch guide is helping to keep the seam nice and accurate. And then finally, we do the last press, set the seam, roll back towards the red fabric and set your seam. All the seams are going towards the dark fabric on this block. So now we're going to cut this. So line this up on your mat using horizontal and vertical lines and we're going to just tidy up that edge. Line up your ruler on the lines and then make a small cut just to give you a straight edge to work with. Next, take your ruler and we're going to measure six and a half inches from the left hand side and you want to make sure that the ruler is lining up with the top and bottom of your block and lines on the seam as well and then cut six and a half inches and then again line up on the second half cut and you have two pieces that are six and a half inches. Now flip that round and place them right sides together and we're going to make sure that our seams are nesting here so you can see that each seam is going in a different direction which means they will nest beautifully. Pin these so that they don't move about and then we're going to take them to the sewing machine and join these together. Again with that leader just come down as you reach the pin Pull the pin out before you get to it, don't sew over it because it may damage your machine. Continue all the way down just making sure that the seams are not moving and that they're staying nice and nested. And then when you're finished trim that leader off. And then finally on the pressing mat set your seam, roll the fabric and then press with the iron to create a nice flat block. And I have pressed that seam to the left hand side of the block. 
So that was how you make a rail fence block. It's very simple, very easy, and it looks great in a quilt. Now, if you wanted to make a lot of these, there are a couple of things that you can do to make the process even faster. Here, we just made one block, so we used shorter strips. If you wanted to make lots of these blocks, what I would do is I would cut two and a half inch strips by width of fabric and sew these together and then cut them up into lots of six and a half inch segments. And that would give you lots of blocks from one strip. This is a jelly roll friendly block, so you can use jelly roll strips to make these. And you can also cut up fat quarters as well to get your strips. When you make sure that you press all your seams towards the darker fabric, it makes sure that when you turn the block around and put them the right sides together, the seams are all nested beautifully. Now let's take a look at some example quilts that are made using this block. So you'll notice in these examples that both quilts are just made using two colours. I've kept it nice and simple, but you could use as many colours as you like. So in this first example, you can see that all the rails of the fence are running horizontally. And all I've done is laid the blocks out in rows and columns and then sewn them all together and then added a white background border around the outside. It's really nice, it's really simple and effective. Looks great, looks great in one color. It would look great in rainbow colors, ombre effect, anything that you like and then you could do lots of things for quilting. So when I make these quilts, I like to do an echo line along the seam lines. So I will stitch one inch from each horizontal seam on both sides and then one inch from each vertical seam on both sides. And it creates a really nice checkerboard effect on the back. You could also do cross hatch quilting on this, either on the diagonal or straight. Uh, you could do meander quilting, it would look fantastic. There are lots of options to quilt this. For this second quilt example, again, I've still stuck with one color in the background, but this time I've turned the blocks 90 degrees so that all the fences are running vertically. And it creates just a slightly different pattern, still really effective, still really simple, would look great with one color, two colors, ombre, rainbow, scrappy, you name it, anything would really work. Again, multiple choices for quilting here. You could do lines either side of the seams, do diagonal quilting, you could do crosshatch, you could do meander, swirls, anything really goes. And if you wanted to make the quilt bigger, you could just add extra columns and rows, or you could just add another border. It might indeed be very nice to take a red border and place this around the outside of the quilt to frame it. So that was the rail fence block, and those were a few example quilts that you can make using that, and some ideas for how to quilt this block. Don't forget, there are two free worksheets in the description below, one with all the instructions and fabric requirements to make this block, and then a second one that has all the fabric requirements and cutting instructions to make the entire sampler quilt. And they are both free and links are in the description. I'd love you to share your progress as well on Instagram using the hashtag BTBSeason1. And don't forget to tag me, the colorblind quilter, so that I can follow along with all the beautiful blocks and quilts that you're making. In the next video, we'll be making block number six in our sampler quilt, which is the disappearing four patch. Don't forget, if if you found this video helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you want to be notified when the next video comes out don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you get notified and until next time take care